Iran's president, Saul Ninista, condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine, calling it a cruel and unprovoked war and a blatant violation of the Charter of the United Nations. He called on UN members not to accept, condone or normalize such aggression. And this was all before Putin's nuclear comments. Ninista's nation shares an 800-mile border with Russia, and the war in Ukraine triggered the Finns to apply for NATO membership in May, alongside their neighbors in Sweden. I want to welcome to the program President Ninista. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. So, Thank you, sir. Tell us, tell us where, what you think uh, Putin is going to do now. You have met him so many times. Um, he does appear to be cornered in some ways. Um, he does appear to be uh, becoming more reckless with these nuclear threats. Tell us what your analysis of his state of mind is. How I see is uh, in uh, actually poker uh, terms, he has put all in. And uh, he is a fighter, so uh, it is very difficult to see him accepting any kind of defeat, and that surely makes uh, the situation very, very crucial. You said, um, I remember in, in early February, before the Russian invasion, that something you, you sensed had changed about Putin, that he used to be very careful, incremental, uh, calculating, but that he was he was behaving in a much more aggressive fashion. In, in just in your conversations, w what do you think happened? Because everyone is perplexed by this. Everyone thought Putin was yes, he may be a nasty guy, but but there was a sort of uh, a pattern of carefulness, and he suddenly he seems to become very reckless. What do you think has happened? If we go years back, we see, or at least I have seen and um, understood some kind, of, some kind of development in his thinking. He's frustrated because of the situation in Ukraine after 2014. And then, in a way, progressively, uh, I have uh, felt that his uh, frustration is uh, growing and... Uh, very obviously, he just decided to get this thing uh, somehow solved, or at least uh, trying to solve it. Do you think that, th that um, there is a possibility that he will expand his, his war aims? Um, you know, people talk about Moldova. Obviously, you, must be, you, you, you have to be careful what watching. Uh, you have a long border with Russia. We haven't seen any sign in Finland. Actually, it's uh, more calm than, than uh, for years. Uh, so uh, I think that he has uh, enough now headache in, in Ukraine, and uh, it uh, doesn't seem very obvious that he could uh, make any maneuvers elsewhere. Not now and not in a nearby future. Do you think that some of Putin's change may have come about because of the isolation of COVID, that he was only listening to a small group of advisors? Because you saw him uh, many times before that. Uh, do you sense that that period of two years of total isolation had, has played a part here? Yeah, I met him last time, uh, approximately a year ago, last October. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, it seems that he is quite alone in the big halls, uh, empty big halls. Uh, there weren't uh, very many people. So he has been careful with uh, COVID, and uh, maybe that's why that uh, the people surrounding him uh, are not that many anymore. And I, I actually don't know who are nearby. Mr. President, um, everybody is wondering about this question. Uh, it's going to get very cold. Gas is already very expensive. Um, by some measures, it is 10 times as expensive now uh, as it was before the invasion. Um, will Europeans be able to maintain the pressure, um, or will there start to be uh, cracks in the European coalition against Russia? Yes, uh, gas price of energy, food, even inter interest rates are rising. So that means uh, tough times for households. Uh, 
it's often thought that uh, Europeans or we Western people are used to, let's say, to a life which goes always to better and better, and thus that we are very weak to to face uh, difficulties. But uh, I would say that uh, Ukrainians gave an excellent example that uh, there is stamina uh, amongst people when difficulties come. And uh, difficulties which uh, we are facing are minor if compared to those uh, Ukrainians are, are meeting. So uh, I believe that uh, we European people can take it and uh, have resilience. Um, specifically, one of the big issues that people worry about is Italy. Uh, the Italian elections, uh, assuming Madame Maloney comes to power, this is a three-party coalition. Two of the parties have been openly pro-Russian. Is that likely to change the dynamic if the Italians go into the, you know, the European Council and say, you know, we don't want our, our, as some of the parties have been saying during the campaign, we don't want to have to pay for this. We don't want Italian households to have to bear the brunt of this, of this war with Russia. No, I actually don't believe that uh, that would be uh, a problem. The other issue is that uh, the Italian economy is not in very good shape at the moment, and uh, that might raise uh, also uh, questions and discussion on uh, some kind of uh, solidarity, uh, financial solidarity in Europe. And I guess that might be even uh, bigger or real uh, problem. Are you saying that the Italians will need money from the European Union so they are unlikely to, to try to break ranks? I wouldn't say that so directly, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, the finances are not in a very good shape. We have to keep that in mind, too. Let me, uh, let me finally ask you sort of where we began, which is um, where do we go from here? There are people who think, you, you know, you just need to show as much military force, push the Russians back. And then there is another school that says you, you need to start searching for some diplomatic solution. The Ukrainians, as you know, are very opposed to that right now. Uh, what, would, what would your advice be to the West? I am a man of peace, and uh, I think that every possible deed for uh, looking for peace is important. That's, that's why I uh, strongly support President Macron and uh, Chancellor Scholz, uh, keeping the line open, a possibility open to discuss with the Kreml. Uh, although, uh, I have to admit that at the moment I don't see so very much possibilities to reach the peace. Given your long relationship with, with Vladimir Putin, would you, would you be willing to reach out and, and meet with him and try to see if there is a deal to be had? Mm, well, I haven't had any contact on him now, but uh, if the situation would be such that uh, we find a possibility of getting something positive done. Uh, undoubtedly, I would, uh, surely, after discussing with President Zelensky also. But uh, I'm not asked to do, and uh, I don't see at the moment any possibilities uh, to, to have anything positive done. Mr. President, pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.